Lemmings was a game which was probably awful, like many old titles, but I remember it as this sprawling strategy game. In the same vein, a new title by developer Noclip has just released and it has me clamoring for more brains or something along those lines. Zombie Night Terror is the name of the game and it's available on Steam and GOG with a $13 US base price. Alright, so I started this piece off by talking about a classic game called Lemmings and how Zombie Night Terror is similar, so I should probably explain why that is since many people may never have played Lemmings. In Zombie Night Terror, you don't directly control the zombies, but rather you interact with the environment and change the abilities that the zombies have. It's a 2D side-scrolling game, and the zombies have a very basic walk-shuffle-bite AI where they keep walking until they run into a wall and turn around, or a human and dinner is served. That's all there is to this game. You just need to get the zombies to the end of the level or kill enough humans in order to progress. So in addition to that, you have a series of mutations along the bottom UI of the screen, including things that alter the zombie itself, like the Overlord button, which is a zombie type that acts like a placeable wall, which can turn zombies back in the opposite direction. You've also got mutations that are buffs, like jump or speed, which give temporary effects to the zombie that you use them on. And this is about where the comparison to Lemmings ends. In Lemmings, you had mindless Lemmings that would happily walk off cliffs, cue the cliché. And all you had to do was give certain lemmings jobs like blocker, climber, and such in order to get the lemmings to the end of the level. One of the things that really made the gameplay neat though was the addition to the lemming style of being able to use multiple mutations to stack effects. So, for example, you could place an overlord zombie, which again, normally just acts as a blocker wall keeping zombies from going past it. Then you could use the speed buff and every zombie that comes near that overlord begins to run. So instead of just using a single run buff on one zombie, you get the benefit of a stampeding horde. Each of the zombie mutations costs DNA, which you replenish by either eating more humans or sacrificing some of your zombie horde. There are some pickups that you can grab in some of the levels as well. You don't want to sacrifice too many zombies though, as they're a pretty limited resource in some levels. For level variety, you'll have everything from nightclubs to prisons, inside areas, outside areas, rain, and of course, a zombie apocalypse to control along the way. The graphic style is certainly a retro-esque design, but I find that this is really only in the pixels as the animations are great and it has enough of a modern feel to not have to get past the graphics. You have limited graphical options, including bloom and film grain, which are off by default, state of existence that I appreciate very much, thank you, volume sliders for the various aspects of audio, and the keys are rebindable as well. The only issue that I had at the game from a quality control standpoint is that zombies will occasionally get stuck in odd places, but that was infrequent enough as to not really hamper the experience. I really enjoyed the level variety and challenge variety that the game throws at you. You can pause it at any time and scroll over a whole level looking at the ideal path that you want to take. Many of the levels have no time limit at all, so you can set up a couple of overlords to corral your horde and kind of peel out a zombie or two at a time to go and experiment with different tactics. It does have some more urgent levels, and while I do like some of that, I'm glad that it didn't become a majority of the game as they weren't my favorite levels. I will say that the difficulty curve is a bit wacky and that you'll find some levels are quite difficult, but then the very next level could be really, really easy. Getting stuck and having to overcome the challenge is something that I appreciate, but I appreciate proper pacing just as much an element that I feel no clip could work on. I'm also not a fan of the tip system. When you get a new ability or are expected to use a combined ability, the game helpfully pops up a green TV screen to click on to tell you exactly which combination to use. I feel that this takes the challenge of discovery out of things and could have easily been replaced with a single mention at the beginning that you can use buffs on your regular zombies and on your mutated zombies as well, perhaps also with a tip if you die on a level too much. I'm not a fan of laying the strategy right out there in front of the player, at least not all of the time. And as a final little piece of hopeful information, the developer has said that they intend to push out a free update level editor that is connected to the Steam Workshop. Now, I'm all for free updates later on, but it seems to me that a level editor for an indie game like this is the kind of thing that you should have on release to help keep what hype the game gets higher and get the sharing side moving. You could get some really good viral appeal from GIFs and videos of crazy player-made scenarios. And at the end of it all, my conclusion to the game is simple. If you liked Lemmings, you will like Zombie Night Terror. It has a very obviously inspired design, but it does iterate in some ways, which keeps things interesting. The pacing is a bit meh, but there are great levels in the game, and for 13 bucks US, I can absolutely recommend it. This has been a review of Zombie Night Terror on PC, came out on Steam and GOG July 20th for 13 bucks US. I'm Tarmac. Thanks for watching.